Let's take a look at where this disaster struck. The earthquake's epicenter on Friday night was southwest of Marrakesh. The tremors radiating from there, with much of the damage done in remote areas, often high in the Atlas Mountains, and hard to reach. So let's find out more about why this quake did so much damage and what can be learned from it. John Cassidy is a seismologist with the federal government. He joins us now from Victoria. Uh, John, we know 6.8 magnitude earthquake, that is powerful. But tell us, what is it about this quake that led to so much destruction and death? Uh, yes, such a such a tragic event there in Morocco. It's it's a combination of of things. It's uh, first the size of the earthquake, as you mentioned, a six point eight, is very large uh, earth and damaging. Of course, earthquake. It was relatively shallow. It was close to some major population centers. Uh, something like two to three million people experienced strong shaking during this earthquake. Um, so it's all of those factors, and then combined with um, this, this type of construction in the in the area, the materials that are used, and and the age very old buildings typically. I don't th I don't think of Morocco as being a place susceptible to big quakes like this. But you're a seismologist. Was this expected? Uh, it, it's not. Uh, it's not unexpected. It's it is a region um, close to a major tectonic plate boundaries. So most of the world's earthquakes occur where these giant tectonic plates meet. Uh, in this case, the uh, African plate is moving very slowly to, to the north and to the northwest and colliding. Um, that's what produced the Atlas Mountains in, in Morocco. Um, so it's a region that has had earthquakes in the past, but it's been a very long time in this immediate part of, of Morocco. You have to go back to the 1600s uh, to see an earthquake of this magnitude. Uh, there was a smaller earthquake in 1960 in Morocco that caused a lot of damage as well because it was close to, to a city. And, um, uh, but, but earthquakes do happen here. It's an active plate boundary. We heard from our reporter Chris Brown that, that quite understandably survivors are sleeping on the streets in many cases, afraid to return to their homes. Is, is there any way to predict uh, the, the frequency and magnitude of aftershocks? Uh, in, in a very general sense, we can, um, we can estimate what would be expected for aftershocks and for a shallow earthquake like this, um, uh, a 6.8 earthquake, um, on average, we would expect to see the largest aftershock in the magnitude 5, 5.5 range. So, so far, we, there have been dozens and dozens of aftershocks, felt aftershocks. Uh, the largest uh, to date is a 4.8, so it's quite a bit smaller than, than would be sort of a global average for aftershocks of, of an earthquake like this. So certainly we can expect aftershocks to continue for many days and likely many weeks to come. It's hard to, to say exactly what will happen because every aftershock sequence is different, but certainly these should be expected and, and significant aftershocks can be expected. Yeah, so, I mean, some good reason if you are questioning the structural integrity of, of a home uh, to, to stay outside for now, I guess. Yeah, it, that's exactly right. Um, buildings that have been weakened by the main earthquake, uh, it, much smaller aftershocks can cause uh, more damage mm -hmm. to those buildings. So it, um, that's exactly right. John Cassidy, thank you very much for helping us better understand what's uh, going on with this earthquake. Thank you. Thank you, Ian.